Hello, my name is Caleb. I'm with Scanning Tech here at the Fine Lab, and today we're going to be going over a list of 35mm cameras that we feel are solid recommendations for starting out your film journey. At the end, we'll give some general guidelines to buying any film camera. Try the camera you already own. Most likely there's a camera that's in your grandma's attic or in the garage and they're just lying around somewhere collecting dust. Find one of these cameras, load some film in it, and test it out. Most of the time these cameras still work great and they're for free. So if you can dip your toes into film without having to buy a camera, that's always super helpful. The cameras we recommend. This list is not comprehensive. It does not include all the great cameras that are out there, but this list is great for cameras to start out on. You're probably going to have a good film experience with one of these cameras. This is the Canon A1. It's a classic. Um, there's also the Canon A1 program. These cameras were built around 1976 to 1984. They give you much more of a mechanical shooting experience. These cameras are highly available on the market. They're not that expensive and they look great around your neck. The shutter on these cameras requires a battery. It uses either a 4L44 or a 4SR44 6 volt battery and it will not fire without it. The upside though is you can probably get a year's worth of shooting on a single battery depending on how much you're shooting. Keep in mind that with these cameras that they are manual focus only. There's no autofocus, they use Canon's older FD lens system. There are many different lenses around for these cameras. Um, they're easy to get, the optics are good, and they are inexpensive. This camera, however, will not work with the newer Canon EF lenses. The Canon A1 program is a little bit newer model than the Canon A1. And with that, the main difference is that it adds the program mode, which chooses your aperture and your shutter automatically, or just the shutter speed if you set the aperture on the lens. This is the Nikon F100. It was my first film camera. My uncle gave it to me. He was an Nikon photographer back in the day. And if you're a Nikon photographer and you have Nikon glass, buy an F100. This camera is around $200. And for that price, it's honestly incredible. Fun fact, at the Fine Lab, this is the most commonly owned 35 millimeter camera. This camera is more electronic and might feel like a lot of the digital cameras that you already own. They were introduced in 1999 and built until 2006. So they are part of the later generations of film cameras that were made. These cameras are super solid, very reliable. They have an incredible autofocus system and there's a huge selection of Nikon F mount lenses that are compatible with it. So that's a great bonus to having professional Nikon glass for it. And they take AA batteries. Who doesn't want your camera to have AA batteries? AA batteries. <laughs> If you're looking for a similar camera to the Nikon F100, but you're on a budget, there's the Nikon N80 or F80. This camera has a slightly lower feature set than the Nikon F100, but you can find them for under $100. They're a great deal. They're a great camera for a beginner shooter, um, especially since you can also add the, some of the Nikon F mount lenses. All right, the next camera we have on our list is the Canon EOS 3. These are going to be a very similar shooting experience to the Nikon F100. They were built from 1998 to 2007. And they're a great option if you already have a 5D or a similar camera because they'll take all the Canon EF lenses. The EOS has an excellent building quality. It has all the features and modes that you would expect in your digital camera. And the autofocus system is incredible. It includes 45 different autofocus points and is very helpful in low light scenarios. The EOS 3 typically takes a 2CR5 battery. However, you can also get this power grip that takes eight AA batteries and extends the battery life of your camera. If you're on a budget and you're still hoping to use your Canon EF lenses, we've got two great Canon series for you. There's the EOS Rebel series and the EOS A2 series. Um, both of these cameras are a lot more plastic versus the EOS 3, so they're not as high quality or reliable. The great part about these though is that they're relatively inexpensive compared to the EOS 3 and they still take your Canon glass on the front and you can load the film in the back and you're good to go. This is the Pentax K1000. Um, it's a classic, super simple camera. You change your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture, and that's it. They don't even have an on or off switch. It's a great camera to use. It makes you slow down and focus on the fundamentals of photography. 
The shutter is fully mechanical, it does not need a battery, and it goes up to 1 1,000th of a second. The only thing though on this camera that does take a battery is the light meter. However, the light meter is probably not that consistent always with these, so we do recommend verifying the readings with a handheld light meter or light meter app on your phone. This camera uses a 1.5 volt button cell battery. However, remember that this camera does, um, doesn't have an on and off button. So if light is entering through the camera, the light meter is working and the battery is slowly draining. So if you're gonna be leaving this on the shelf for a while, make sure to just put on the lens cap. One simple but valuable feature that we love on the K1000 that we wish other cameras had is the shutter wind indicator. If the shutter is cocked, it'll turn orange, helping you know that the camera is ready to go. The last camera on our list is the Canon SureShot Telemax. It's an incredible point and shoot camera. You can find them for $50 to $60. They're super simple. You just turn them on, choose your flash setting, and you're ready to go. With these cameras, they take a three volt lithium battery. One cool feature that you get with the Canon SureShot Telemax that you don't get with other point and shoots is the dual focal length lens. With the flip of the switch, you can choose between a 38 millimeter or a 70 millimeter lens. All right, things to watch when choosing a camera. First, consider what type of shooting experience are you looking for? Are you going for that old school mechanical type? Or do you want a point and shoot that you can take to the club with your friends? Or are you a digital photographer hoping to transition to film photography and get a nice electronic SLR? One of the fun things about shooting film is that each camera has its own personality. What type of focus does your camera use? Is it auto or is it manual? Consider which is a better match for you and your shooting style. Does it have an internal light meter? If it doesn't have one, there are ways to work around that with an external light meter or a light meter app on your phone. However, it's really nice to have this built into your camera, especially if you're starting out shooting film. What battery does the camera use? Are they very expensive batteries? Are they readily available? Consider this when choosing a camera. If flash photography is something important to you, there are some cameras that have built-in flashes. Otherwise, pay attention to your sync speed on the camera to set up your external flash. How expensive is the camera? If you're just starting out shooting film, you definitely don't need a $5,000 Leica. We also don't recommend just grabbing the cheapest SLR you can find. There's going to be a sweet spot in between those two. For $150 to $250, you can definitely find a camera that you'll be using for years and years. What lens should you get? Talking about everything that goes into a lens selection could turn this into a long conversation. So here are just a few key things to look for if you're starting out. The most important thing to consider when picking a lens is how wide of an angle it is. This is measured in focal length. For example, if you have a 100 millimeter lens compared to a 50 millimeter lens, the 100 millimeter lens will be longer and also more zoomed in. All right, zoom versus prime lenses. Zoom lenses are adjustable focal lengths Prime lenses have a single fixed focal length. Prime lenses tend to accompany film cameras more often and we generally recommend for a beginner shooter to grab a prime lens. We recommend looking for lenses with focal lengths between 28 and 50 millimeter. These lenses are a great place to start. Know a camera that deserves to be on our list? Tell us in the comments below. Also, we have a lot of great plans for the channel this year. Subscribe so you don't miss out.